Um, Linda has a different slide deck than I have. Um, all my doing. And she is not. Linda has a different slide deck than I have, um, all my doing, and she is not at all stressed um, by that, even a tiny little bit. Uh, can I see a show of hands for people who have been to more than one of the mayor's addresses, what, more than one of mine? Wow, you guys all came back. Um, you, you are truly, truly kind. Um, so you've all heard the, uh, the gag where a guy shows up to do a speech and he pulls out you know, this great big long uh, whack of things. Um, no gag. We asked uh, the department heads to uh, come up with some information. The first run of this speech had over a hundred slides uh, in the deck. Uh, so uh, to all of the staff that worked so hard on that, uh, thank you. Um, sorry, all of your slides did not make it. <laughs> um, and I've also learned once again that I really, really uh, have to be careful of what I, what I wish for. So an outline of uh, what we're going to do tonight, uh, we're going to talk about where we were and uh, where we're headed, how we're moving forward, how you can help, uh, and then there'll be a big thanks uh, to you for helping us to head in the right direction. Um, the, where we were and, and where we're going is sort of like an environmental scan. You need to take a look at, at what's going on in the world around you. And there's a story that I, I couldn't help but think of, and, and that's one of a burglar that breaks into a house, and he's busy burgling the house. And he hears a voice coming from nowhere saying, God is watching, which disturbs him because, you know, if you're a burglar doing this, you don't want to hear voices. He figures that it's his conscience, he's rifling through drawers, and he hears it again, he goes into the dining room and he's after the silverware, and once again he hears, God is watching. Turns the corner of the kitchen and there's a parrot. And he looks at the parrot and says, I suppose you're God. And the parrot says, no leans over, points out a 120-pound Rottweiler, and says, that's God. <laughs> um, the point to that is, you know, sometimes it's good to stand still uh, and take account of where you are and what you're doing, what's really going on around you, uh, as opposed to assuming uh, what's uh, going on around you. So, I said I was going to tell you where we were, and I need to do this part of the presentation every year, so I am going to share with you fun with Nancy's numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. Um, did you notice the Smithy animation? <laughs> uh, that was our achievement uh, today in the office. Uh, so, and you didn't clap for the animation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, you guys have been to these uh, presentations before. Uh, what am I going to tell you, Nancy, is her treasure, about taxes in Clarington? Oh, going down. Ron Robinson, is, uh, he's an optimist. Um, he's misguided. Uh, we love him anyway. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, the same old, same old. And every year I make these a little bit uh, uh, shorter, but this is uh, sort of where we have been um, and uh, where we are going to be in the future. So the next slide, please. Uh, really quickly, property taxes as a percentage of income. Um, exact same slide that we've seen for several years in a row now. Uh, Clarington, 3.7% of household income goes to property taxes. Our neighbours, 4% in Whitby, 4.2% Pickering, 4.3% in Ajax, and 47 in Oshawa. So for those of you in the uh, retail sector, I'm looking at you, Ron, um, and Ron knows this already, um, you know, we, we are an affordable community. Uh, the next is, if we took a senior executive home, so this is sort of an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, and put that executive home in other municipalities, um, you'll see that uh, Pickering, the uh, same senior executive home taxes, 63.72, 
Oshawa, 6087, Ajax, 6048, Whitby, uh, 5962, Clarington, $5,082. Uh, so again, compared with our peers, right across Durham, as a matter of fact, we do exceptionally well. And the uh, next one, five-year trend, and this, you know, this is an interesting uh, number for you. Uh, so in 2010, again, that uh, executive home, uh, the taxes were 46.97 and 14, uh, 50.82. Uh, the average annual increase, 1.6%. Now, I'm going to take a second and give you a sales pitch. Um, one of the things that I'm doing as well is I am chairing uh, the region's uh, strategic plan. The bulk of your property taxes go to Durham Region. You have the opportunity right now, well, wait a few minutes till I'm done the speech, not right now, but you've got the opportunity to go on the Region's website and find out about sessions that are going on. Uh, you can do a survey online to have some input into what you think the Region needs to be doing moving forward. So I'm going to leave you with that. And I have already completely strayed from my speech. Is Basha here? Where are you, Basher? Put your hand. So Basher, our communications officer, she asked me after I did my first speech for a copy of the speech, and I said, no, you can't have it. Uh, and she thought I wouldn't give it to her. It's just because I probably don't have a copy of the speech. <laughs> so a little bit of a scroll through history. Uh, when I did my first speech um, as mayor, uh, we talked about what had changed over 10 years, because sometimes you don't really see the, uh, the forest or the trees. Um, uh, Paul, there's Paul Halliday. Apparently, I also used a lot of shtick, Paul's word, uh, in the speech. So uh, I'm going to use less shtick tonight um, and give you some information and some numbers that uh, hopefully you're going to find um, actually interesting. This is uh, Carlos Salazar's information. Willie, would you mind reading uh, those? <laughs> I don't really expect you to read what is on that screen, but uh, on that screen uh, and the next screen are commercial and industrial uh, permits. Uh, so over uh, four years, uh, $122 million, uh, and these are large, this is not everything, of investments made by you folks. Uh, and it is so truly appreciated. Um, again, you get used to things that are around you. You know what, four years ago, the shopper's drug mart around the corner wasn't there. No frills down the street uh, wasn't there. The shoppers that's in Bowmanville wasn't there, nor was the shoppers that's in Curtis. The big liquor store in Bowmanville, yeah. uh, beside that huge Canadian Tire, my favorite place on the planet, perhaps, Walmart uh, wasn't open uh, at the same time. Uh, the EFW, uh, OPG has made a small commitment uh, to our municipality with the, uh, with the deck. Uh, the expansions at most point. And you know, we're used to these, but these are all things that in the past four years have been there. My favorite, the liquor store in Curtis. <laughs> okay, you laughed. If we were in Curtis, they would be cheering right now, right? So, but you know, huge, yeah, <laughs> huge number uh, of uh, things. We have been a busy, uh, busy uh, community. Uh, we're hearing, uh, and Masood, uh, you'll know this uh, full well, we are hearing uh, from developers and real estate agents um, with the low property taxes, with low property values, and you could not. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of interest uh, in people coming out to do development because of the stuff that is uh, going on. There is uh, true demand. Another list. Uh, so from the planning department, um, you've got uh, 26 items uh, on that list of major projects that Davis Department is currently undertaking. Can you go backwards? <coughs> Hi, Sheila. Number one on the list is the official plan review. And she knew that was her outside uh, voice. Huge, huge undertaking that uh, we've been working on, but for all of you in the room, uh, so, so very, uh, very important. Now, my favorite part, pictures. And that's because pictures are like show and tell, and this is the only thing I did good in grade school. Oh, come on, that was funny. Uh, but you see, the uh, Bowmanville Seniors uh, Group, so that's the, uh, the school that has finally been knocked down, and uh, Laura, uh, I'm not sure if Laura made it here yet, but you know, anyone living in, in or doing business in that area is just so happy uh, to see that to come down. Green Road, uh, mixed use building, uh, Newcastle Dental, something that uh, is planned for up the road. I don't actually know what's on this slide. 
thank you for putting this up, Linda. This is one of those new ones. Um, Brookhouse down the road, uh, the jury lands. Um, can anyone please shake uh, Harry Hominan's hand on the way out because he has really stepped up. We've got a trail that is uh, going in back there. That is the first step, uh, first tangible step in a long time. And Martin's looking at me too, Martin, sorry. You need to shake Martin's hand because, because he's doing a little something in St. Mary's. Um, a great act of uh, corporate citizenship in uh, starting to move forward and we're hoping uh, tangible first step in getting a trail and eyes on those buildings, uh, moving forward to getting some uh, action on, on uh, getting that site closer to where it needs to be in terms of preservation. You can talk to Councilor Wu, who's put a huge amount of uh, time and effort in that. Um, the other, you'll see those brochures up at the top, you can't really read them, ask uh, David about them. Um, those are so very cool. Uh, so you've got self-guided tours around Clarington, and again, the proposed official plan that is coming out. Please. Engineering. So a different set of numbers. Um, bottom line is sort of the interesting number. Uh, so these are the, uh, the value of building permits up to June uh, of this year. So in 2014, looking back, uh, $66 million. June of this year, $135 million. A 103% increase. So, you know, if it feels like it's been busy, uh, it's been busy. Now, are you guys ready for this? This is another spiffy animation. Rory, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Um, so, from the engineering department, you get a sense this is what's going on uh, down around uh, Holt Road and the VFW. Uh, it is a massive, massive uh, project. So, part of Reefer, uh, Brian didn't tell you all, but that is a multi billion dollar project. That's going to bring about 2,000 people to town, Brian, um, to a town near us, but to our town, really, really soon. Um, so you need to ask, you know, what are the services uh, that you might be able to provide uh, to the uh, providers on that? Uh, another tiny project, 407. Uh, $1.2 billion. Oh, four years ago, something else that there was no tangible evidence uh, that we were going to uh, get it here. So, in about six months' time, you're expected to be able to drive this thing to Lakeridge. Uh, about a year and a half, uh, you should be on that thing um, and getting off causing traffic jams at Harmony Road. Um, but beyond that, in, uh, in 2022, when we were so pleased to see the province let that contract, um, you know, again, tremendous uh, opportunity. If you know someone with a dump truck, um, between that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the Port Hope Area Initiative. Uh, oh man, uh, be nice to them. So another one, more show and tell. Um, we had a really, really, really cool blinky slide um, for this. So this is the Green Road underpass. It has been many years in the making. I've, I've talked about it. Uh, the blinky slide uh, showed what a huge impact this is going to have on traffic patterns in Bowenville. Uh, Linda and I could not figure the blinky slide out. She told me I shouldn't say that. I pointed out that if we could understand everything that engineers gave us, we would be worried. Um, so you're going to uh, have to trust us that this is going to have a major positive impact. Uh, Tony, that's two apologies I owe you, but that's okay. So we've got uh, billions, literally billions of dollars of investments in Clarington. There is uh, tons of opportunity. Uh, and I, uh, I was uh, talking about the Port Hope Area Initiative on October 7th uh, in this room. Uh, that's from uh, 3 until 8, the Port Hope Area Initiative is doing an open house. Uh, that is a $1.3 billion project. Uh, Steve, it was uh, nice meeting Steve uh, Remus here. Steve, put your hand up. Um, so you've got a tiny role to play in this uh, in this project, just a little uh, role. Um, but you'll want to be here, uh, and I'll tell you that the uh, Port Hope Area Initiative has been fantastic in reaching out to both communities uh, to show what potential businesses to be had, how they can uh, integrate. Now, I want to talk about the strategic plan a little bit um, because that's sort of Council's idea on what we're doing for the next uh, four years. Uh, Councilor Hooper, can you do a drum roll? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Councillor Hooper is a uh, drummer, uh, and he sings okay, uh, too. Uh, and here's why I needed the drum roll. Next slide, please. 
The very, very first line on our strategic plan and the first quote in that is, work with the Clarington Board of Trade. We have these uh, at the back. They're uh, quick, easy to look at, but in fact, you will uh, find that. So uh, the first goal is to facilitate the creation of jobs, attraction of new business, and expansion of existing business. And 1.1 under the new actions uh, is exactly that. Um, sometimes we forget about the amazing and the productive relationship that the municipality has with the Board of Trade, and, and that's the result of a lot of work on, on both sides. Uh, for all of you, because you are supporting the Board of Trade uh, by being here tonight, um, Don, you took all my good stuff, thank you. Uh, but you know, to the directors, the past directors, and the volunteers that uh, make it happy, please, please accept our thanks. And Sheila, to you and the ladies who all uh, make it happen, um, and you do so much work in the community, um, we have to give you a huge, huge, huge heartfelt thanks. I just want to prove because it said applause, I hope. <laughs> So, I need you guys to do something. Oh, no. <laughs> well, okay, maybe I should clarify. Um, during the election, I, I talked about the importance of, uh, of, of culture. Um, so we, uh, business uh, and government, need to embrace the reality that we're in it together. Uh, we are partners. Um, we work together building and sustaining our communities. Um, sink or swim, we're going to sink or swim. Um, and we're making progress. Uh, the progress that we're making isn't always evident. Hi, Lawson. Where are you, Lawson? <laughs> but, but we are, in fact, uh, making progress. Um, on the economic development front, I can tell you that Councillor Hooper and uh, Councillor Wu, as well as uh, Sheila Hall, uh, we're down in uh, uh, Hamilton to see what they are doing. They've got some interesting ideas and things in place for economic development. As you heard earlier, uh, the Board of Trade is working on their contract, but as well as the service uh, delivery uh, that they are doing. We need your help to hear about improvements that we need to make. Um, that started with the Developers' Roundtable, and that needs to continue. So tell us how we need to consider changing and how we need to change. And exactly as Don said with the Board of Trade, tell us when our staff are doing good things. I'm going to make David explain that there are donuts involved when we hear about a staff member uh, who, has, uh, who has really gone out of the way. But we need to recognize both the challenges as well as the successes that we have. Um, how can you help? So this is probably the, uh, the most important slide. I'm going to speak to Newcastle's of the world at last, but we absolutely need you to help us advocate with the provincial and federal government. I can tell you that every minister, every federal politician, and every provincial politician knows full well when they see me that I have an ask. They are used to every member of council and every mayor saying, gosh golly, Jais, if you could only do a blank. Um, so, believe it or not, there is a degree of, of credibility uh, that does not exist uh, on the political level. You folks make the investments and create the jobs. You have more credibility with upper levels of government than I think you sometimes understand. And you need to reach out and let them know that. Um, go Transit. Um, you can talk to uh, Curry Clifford uh, about the amount of work that has been going on for probably a year now, uh, most of it behind the scenes, uh, working with the province and other partners. It's frustrating. Uh, it takes a huge amount of time. But, you know, the Go Train coming in means hundreds of millions of dollars of assessment growth in Whitby, the same in Oshawa, 
and the same in Clarington. And it's important for you guys, this is not simply a matter of a bedroom community allowing people to get into Toronto uh, and back to work in Toronto, but it's being able to get people out here. It's quality of life uh, for our residents. I can tell you that Peel has an average house value 20% higher than Durham. Peel is the second lowest in the GTA, which tells you where we are. And the thing that we are missing is that infrastructure. Uh, so for the sake of your businesses, for the, for the sake of your homes, if you live here, uh, Go Transit is so important and we need your help. You, you may be hearing something more tangible uh, from us on, on how you can help. So we need to do some studies and some reports. Broadband, another issue. So some of you who work in our industrial parks are going home to do your work because you don't have appropriate access to the internet minutes away from the 401 in the Greater Toronto Area. The Premier has held several summits with the uh, GTA Mayors uh, and Chairs, uh, and I can tell you that every single Mayor is saying the same thing. We need help with broadband. Canada used to be a leader in internet access. This is so important uh, to all of us. I know Mayor Henry uh, thinks that uh, Durham College UIT would be a great spot for a, a data centre and dark fibre. And I know Viridian is working at trying to bring uh, the municipalities in Clar Clarington and Durham together to get that access that we so broad badly need. Agriculture. Um, agriculture is still over half of the economic product of Clarington. Um, what are the policies, both at the federal and provincial level, that help agriculture here in Clarendon, as well as across Canada. We need to know, and we need some help with that. Hydro One, I'm going to do a, a bit of a sales pitch. Um, Mike, it's great that the lights went out earlier. Uh, but, did you know, and, and you know I'm, I'm biased as, uh, uh, as chair of Viridian, but uh, you know, did you know, uh, we have been after the province for years uh, to try to pick up some Hydro One assets such as Curtis. So, I'm a resident of Curtis, um, as seven in the crowd are. Um, did you know that you pay between four and five hundred dollars a year more for your electricity than you would if it was part of Viridian? Hugely frustrating. Now, I was suggesting to Mike Langemere that uh, I was going to do a, a funny video. Um, I was going to sniff an electrical outlet. Uh, I was going to listen to it, I was going to look at it uh, to see if I could, you know, hear, see, or smell. I forgot what senses I still have control over. Uh, a change of electricity. We we're going to end with that with me looking at it. He thought that was a really bad idea. Um, you know, but, but truthfully, <coughs> unless they're better electrons. Uh, the other thing that's really important on, on that issue is the dividends that are generated by. Uh, Viridian uh, help all of the shareholders in a significant uh, fashion. Uh, nuclear, Brian, great sales pitch. Um, you know, we've got those hearings coming up and uh, he's, he's absolutely correct. Um, when the panel is asking you questions, um, they are all business. I can tell you that Michael Binder has a great sense of humor, um, not when he is in the chair of that commission. Is that a reasonable uh, observation? Um, nuclear, 50,000 uh, well-paying jobs. And I can tell you that we had a meeting with the uh, Minister of Energy, uh, uh, Councillor Wu, Councillor Hooper, and Councillor Park were with me, were with me um, uh, is suggesting, long shot yet, that new build may not uh, be dead. So refurb, wouldn't that be great uh, to be followed up? Billions of dollars uh, worth of investments. Um, huh. And the last thing is federal election. Uh, we have two federal candidates here tonight. Um, three. Okay, I didn't know, so I'm, I'm sorry. Put your hands up, guys. Whoever knows where you are. <laughs> so my apologies. I had a chat with two. Um, Folks, uh, thank you for running because without people to step up, the process does not work. But you need to engage the candidates, uh, listen to the platform, listen to what they think. So uh, ask them. And um, whoever's elected, you need to impress upon them that this is local stuff that needs to be dealt with. So advocate. Help us uh, advocate. Hi, guys. Um, and lastly, uh, Newcastle's of the world. I'm going to speak to this really quickly. Uh, about a year from now, we are going to have people from around the globe um, that come from places called Newcastle, uh, whatever the Japanese equivalent is, Neuchatel, 
uh, I think is in uh, Switzerland, uh, I can't pronounce the one out of the Czech Republic, uh, a couple of new castles in England, uh, we're going to be putting our best foot forward, or best face forward. Um, talk to Councillor Wu uh, or Councillor Partner on this, uh, but we're going to need help and see how you can get involved with that. I think that that is going to be a good. This is an organization that's been around for, uh, for quite a while. So, I was searching the internet for good jokes to tell. Um, yeah, that's a really bad idea. But I did come up with old sayings that they had children finish. Don't change horses until they stop running. Bird in the hand is going to poop on you. <laughs> a penny saved is not much. <laughs> Strike while the bug is close. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, get new batteries. <laughs> it occurred to me that these were actually pretty good because you know what? There is absolutely nothing wrong with any of those sayings. They're all correct. We're just used to the old regular sayings. And maybe what we need to do is instead of being used to saying the same thing and giving the same answer over and over again, maybe we need to think that there can be different answers that we're just not used to that might apply equally. So, yeah, you know, the wisdom of children, who knows? I can't get away without a quote, uh, so I'm going to uh, wind up another quote from uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, I like her quotes. Uh, and this is, do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, my second last task is to encourage you to please uh, do what you feel in your heart to be right. And my last task, because I promised this at the beginning, was a big thanks to you because you're the guys that drive our economy.